Hello, my name is Todd Miranda. In this video, I want to give an introduction to 3D programming in WPF. So let's begin in a tool other than Visual Studio, other than our, our typical IDE that we might be programming our WPF application in. We're going to use XAMPLpad. And XAMPLpad is a tool that's included with the Microsoft SDK for the 3.5 framework. And it's a tool that just allows us to do real-time kind of rendering of our XAML. So there's not any IntelliSense or any of the kind of those niceties, but it allows us to very quickly kind of tweak values and not have to worry about either refreshing the the design view or running this to get a better better feel for what this is going to look like in their application. It's just a real-time XAML renderer. And there's actually a couple out there that are that include some things like IntelliSense and so there's there's some other tools out there besides XAMPLpad that are similar to XAMPLpad but since XAMPLpad is something that comes with the SDK that you'll already have on your machine then we'll go ahead and, and utilize that so let's talk about 3D programming and sometimes 3D programming can seem a little overwhelming because there's some some very very odd classes and objects that we have to use in order to uh, enable 3D programming but one of the things that we really need to kind of take a step back from and is try to really understand what is going on in the in 3D programming when we're doing that and what's what some of these some of these things really mean that we have to use in 3D programming so when we when we talk about 3D and we talk about actually rendering something in 3D well we cross over into a space that's that's much more closely resembles the way that we see things in in our actual world around us so one of the things that we need to remember because we'll get into this when we start talking about materials and brushes is when we look at something we're not actually seeing the object that we're looking at what we're seeing is the light that's reflected from that object which is why we don't see anything at night or if it's really really dark and you can see things you don't see necessarily a lot of colors because you're all you're getting is reflection of the surface and some of the color is washed out because you're not getting as much light so when we look at something what we're really seeing is the light that bounces back from that object and hits our eye we're not actually seeing the object itself which may seem a little odd now let, let's let's go back to just the the 3D world around us. When we talk about seeing something in 3D or working with 3D objects, we're talking about these these entities that are in 3D space. And since our screen that we're looking at those entities on is a very flat panel, it's a flat plane, then we have to find some way to get that 3D object that we're looking at in from 3d into 2d so the way we do that in the in the real world in the, the world around us is through our eyes so our eyes are that view from the 3d world into into our, our back into our brain in when working with 3d objects the camera becomes that that device that we use to transfer things from a 3d space into a 2D space because the camera effectively takes and and projects that 3D item onto a plane which is the which is the surface that we view that 3D object through which ultimately be kind of kind of becomes our computer screen but uh, it's that's still that's still the plane so you know let's almost pretend that this is the plane we're gonna view the 3D world through and thus it has to kind of transfer into this 2D space so we have the 3D we have this world we have a 3D object in the world that we're viewing and now we have this camera that allows us to see that 3D object in a two-dimensional way so we have to have a camera in order to view that now the camera can be positioned anywhere in 3D space and its lens can be pointing in any direction All right, so its position for, for instance the camera could be positioned somewhere to the right of an object and if it's not looking at the object if the lens is not pointed at the object all you're just going to see is black space you're not going to see anything so we have a position of the camera and we have its direction or its look direction for the camera and that's the direction that it's pointing 
And then we have to know what's up and down because we're in 3D space, right? So we can be rotating in, in any, any position in that 3D space. So we need to know what is up and what is down. So we also have an up direction for our camera that we'll be looking at. So now we've talked about the space and we've got this camera. We've also talked about the fact that we have this object out there that becomes our 3D model. All right, that's the object that we're viewing. Now earlier we said that the way we see things is we don't actually see the object. We see the light reflected off of the object. All right, well there, now we're going to bring in the material and the brush. So uh, an object can have a material that is very smooth. And if it's very smooth, the light is going to reflect off of it in a very straight way. So light hits it at one angle, it's going to come off of that object at an equal but opposite angle. And that's the, the angle of incident that comes off of that. And we don't really have to worry about angles too much, and that's, that's really good because that gets into some more complexity. But let's say that it was real bumpy. All right, and if it's real bumpy, then light's going to hit it from different angles, and sometimes that light's going to refl be reflected back to us so that we can see it. Other times it might be reflected off into another area of 3D space. And since that light doesn't come back to our eye to see it, that becomes a shadow. All right, so, so again, the material can be a, a, very, a, a very transparent material. It can be in a very opaque material. It could be bumpy material. It could be so that's where that's what material really is. And then we also have the brush. And the brush we're all familiar with if we use WPF. Brush is the actual color of that material or the color at that at that point that the light's reflecting off of it. So sometimes if we have an object that has a, a bumpy surface or maybe that object is turned in such a way the light's reflecting away from us, we see a shadow but it might be hinted at the color that is the underlying color. So again, there's where the material comes in and the brush. All right, that's how that happens. So now the last thing we have to talk about is the mesh. And sometimes this is what can be kind of confusing but it's actually very simple. We need to be able, the light needs to be able to bounce off of it. And in order to be able to bounce off of it, it has to have a, some type of a flat surface. And we call a flat surface a plane. You can think of your computer screen as a plane, or the, the ground is actually a plane. A plane is, is what we see in, in what we can bounce light off of, and it's ultimately what becomes the makeup of the mesh. A mesh is a bunch of these little planes all put together. Okay. Now, the smallest number of points or in this case they're called vertices, the smallest number of points or vertices that can make up a plane, it's not two because a two points or two vertices make a, a line, but if we go to three points or three vertices then we can make a plane out of that. So we can fill in those three lines and we get a flat surface. And that flat surface has a back and a front. So if, if we're talking about light bouncing off of an object, then the light can only bounce off of one, one side. It's either the front or the right back. So what that really means is that the back of a, of a plane is not, is not going to have any color because the light's not going to be hitting it. It's not going to be bouncing off of it. The, the front of the object is where the light's going to be bouncing off of it, so that's what we can see. So if you created a, a, a single plane made of three vertices and you were looking at it and you flipped it over, you wouldn't see anything anymore. Or actually if you moved the camera behind it, you wouldn't see anything because the light is bouncing off the front of it. So we have to find a way, so we know now that three points or three vertices make up a plane. So now we have to so that's that's why that's why a mesh is made up of triangles. Because the triangle is the smallest plane that we can make. Three vertices, the smallest number of vertices we can have to make a plane. So everything in a mesh is made up of all these little triangles. So if you've looked at 3D before, you notice that everything is made up of these these triangles and that's that's your mesh. So now for this little triangle, for this plane made up of three vertices, we have to know what's the front and what's the back. So the way we describe that is using what's called the right hand rule. 
All right, the right hand rule simply means if you take your right hand and you kind of make an L with your index finger and your middle finger, all right, so that you've got your index finger would be here, your middle finger would be pointing out in this direction, and your your thumb would be pointing straight up. Or if we're looking at it in the way of the computer screen here, if this is your index finger and this is your middle finger, then Z, your thumb, would be pointing directly at you. So your index finger is X direction, and where you point, that's positive X. So your finger may be pointing up, so X goes in a positive direction up. So now your middle finger is pointing over this direction, so this is the direction. As you move to the left, that's the direction that's positive Y. And then your thumb is pointing straight at you, or if you're holding your, finger, your hand right, the thumb is you're pointing straight up, so coming out of the screen is positive Z. Going back deeper into the screen is negative Z. That's what the right hand rule means. Now, if you take and make your where your thumb goes up, or in this case, if your thumb goes straight towards you coming out of the screen, and you curl your fingers on your right hand, all right, so here's your fingers coming up this way, if you can imagine that, and you're gonna curl your fingers back around, all right, that becomes the direction that you need to specify the vertices to show that Z, your thumb, is coming up from them. And your thumb, if you think, think of it that way, the Z or your thumb becomes what's called the normal. So if you're looking at 3D uh, terminology, that's the normal of a plane. And the normal of a plane just says, hey, that's the direction that's up. So that's the direction light is going to hit my plane. So we've got a right hand rule that tells us what is positive X, what is positive Y, and what is positive Z direction. And if we curl our fingers of our right hand to, uh, around, if we curl our fingers down, wherever our thumb is pointing, that's the direction. The direction of the curl of our fingers is the direction we need to specify the vertices in that order to specify that that side of the plane where your thumb is coming up, that's the, that's the side that light is going to hit. All right, so that may all sound a, a little confusing, a little overwhelming. Let's begin to lay out the example now that we have all the terminology and kind of all the theory in place. Let's start to lay out an example so we can take a look at that. All right, let's go into our XAML, and we're going to start here in our grid. And the first thing that we need is we need to define this three-dimensional space that we're going to work in. And in XAML, our three-dimensional space is specified as a viewport 3D. So here is our viewport 3D. We're going to do end viewport 3D. All right, so there's our, our three, we now have three-dimensional space. So in our three-dimensional space, in order to see the entity that we're looking at, we need to have a camera, right? We had said that. So let's just create what's called a perspective camera, which is one of the types of cameras that we have available to us when we're dealing with 3D space. So we also have an orthogonal camera, but for now we're going to take a look at just a perspective camera, really just looking at, at introduction to kind of 3D. We're not looking at all the details. So perspective camera. Now, the camera we said needs to be positioned somewhere. So position equals and it's XYZ coordinates. So for now, let's just put this somewhere far away. So let's do negative 50 and 20 and 15. So it's so it's negative 15, negative 50 on the X, positive 20 on the Y and 15 on the Z. So we're up a little bit from origin. We're to the left of the origin and we're back or, or, or towards the negative of the x-axis. Now there's where the camera's position. Now we need to tell it where to look so we're going to specify its look direction and the look direction we'll just specify that as negative 10 so we're so we're back or actually this specified as positive 50 so we're back negative 50 we want to look back towards the origin so we're going to look back towards 50 and we're uh, 20 on the Y, so let's look back towards the origin here as well. Let's do maybe negative 15, and then we're we're 15 high, so we're 15 in the Z direction. Let's look back down towards the origin a little bit, so maybe negative 10 would be good there. 
So there is our look direction. And now we want to have our up direction. So we're going to tell it what direction is up. And up direction is equal to 0, 0, 1. Because we want this to be, we want the z axis to be up. That way we're dealing with just x and y coordinates, which might be something we're a little bit more familiar with. All right, so I'm going to take the spaces out of my my different directions now that we've looked at those and we know kind of where that's coming from. There's our perspective camera with our position, our look direction, and our up direction. All right, now the camera needs to be spaced in the camera property of our viewport. So we're going to come back in and we're going to do viewport 3D dot camera. And then we'll copy that. And control V to paste it. Okay, so now we've specified the camera property of our viewport and we've put a camera in it and this happens to be a perspective camera. Now what's the next property that we need or what's the next element that we need for our viewport? Well the next thing we need is the content of our viewport which is beginning of our model. So let's take a look at our model now. So we're going to need a model and it's going to be a model visual because this is going to be a think of it as a visual model or something we're going to see and we're in 3D space so it's a model visual 3D. Alright so let's come in here we'll end our model visual 3D. Now in our model visual 3D we need some content so we're going to have our model visual 3D dot content and we'll just copy that and paste it and put our end element there. So now the content needs we need to put something in the content. So let's have a some type of a model and it's just going to be a 3D model and we might have more than one 3D element in there right? So we're going to put a group of them in there. So this is why we'll use a model 3D group because we may have more than one. And again, we'll copy and paste and put our end tag on that. So now we have a group of model 3D elements and notice that what makes up this group of model 3D elements is going to be our actual our actual mesh that makes up our model it's going to be our whatever light we might have in here that's going to bounce off of our model and it's also our material for our model so those are the things that make up of our model and the material is going to have some brush information as well okay so those are the things we talked about remember we need a we need a light to bounce off the things so we can actually physically see our model we need the mesh that makes up the model and the mesh is all these little triangles that actually makes up our model and then we need the material that that mesh is is made up of to see how the light that we specified bounces off of it and what color it is. So let's get started. Let's start with our our light. And there's a couple of different lights that we have available to us in in 3D. And if you're really getting into some some serious 3D uh, environments, you can have lots of different lights. You can specify more than one light. And in this case, we're just going to use the directional light. So uh, directional light means we've got light and it's pointed in a particular direction. So we've got the directional light, its color, and we want we want pure white light. So we're going to do white. Now you can play around with the color and the color of the light affects uh, when that color bounces off of a particular um, of a particular elements material and brush. All right. That it can interact with that and you can actually have some unique effects if you specify a different color. And again, since you can have multiple lights, you can have multiple colors shining on it, some interesting things you can do there. And the direction, since this is our directional light, our direction will be, let's just do negative one, negative one, negative three. So it's just going to point just beyond the origin, really. 
Okay, and there's our light. So now we have a light to be able to see our model. Now we need to specify the actual model itself. And this is going to be a geometry model. So we're going to have a geometry model 3D. And we'll do our end geometry model 3D. Now let's go in and let's actually specify our geometry for that geometry model. So we've got our geometry model 3D dot geometry. We'll end that. And we need to specify what is our geometry. And our geometry is going to be a mesh geometry. So we're going to build this geometry 3D. We're going to build this with some type of mesh. All right, so now here is where we specify the mesh. And the mesh is made up of triangles. Each triangle has three vertices. So let's start by specifying the vertices for all of our triangles. So these are going to be the positions of the vertices. So we're going to put, so we're going to make it simple. We'll just, we'll just deal with whole numbers. So we're going to put one at the origin, and then we'll do a space. Now the next one is going to be 10 on the x, and 0 on the y, and 0 on the z. Now the next point will be 10 on the x, 10 on the y, 0 on the z. So 10, 10, 0. And the next one, all right, the next one will be, so now we've specified uh, three. If you can think of, a, think of it, this is a, as a square or a triangle. In this particular case, these three vertices make up a triangle. So we've got one at the origin, which would be, say, say the origin would be here. We've got it. 10, 0, 0, 10, 10, 0, 0. And if we drew an imaginary line back to here, that gives us a right triangle. You can think of that. So technically, this makes up a triangle. But we need another point. So we need a point, uh, a couple other points along our way. We need to specify our, we're going to do 0, comma, 10, comma, 0, which brings us back down. That, that actually gives us the four corners of a square. You think of it that way. And then we've got another point because we want more than just a square. We actually want a 3D object, so we want it to come up into the Z plane, the Z axis, axis a little bit. So we've got a point right at the origin, but up along the Z axis. And then we have another point that's maybe over on the Y. So no X, but 10 on the Y, 10 on the Z. All right, so we've specified a number of points there. They're going to make up our, uh, all these points are going to make up our, our planes. Now we need to specify, remember, we've got all these points that make up triangles, but what we don't know is what is the front of those triangles and what is the back of those triangles. So now, for each one of these points that are here, we have to figure out, like take, for instance, this one, all right, this makes up a triangle, but we have to tell it what order to put those points in so that it knows where the Z or where the normal is, which means where the front of that plane is. So if we specified, let's say we've got a point here, a point here, and a point here. We said that we had to use the right hand rule and we had to kind of curl our fingers in, in, a, in a counterclockwise manner to figure out what where the positive Z is or where our thumb points. So if we want, if we have a, a point here, a point here, and a point here, and we want this front part, what we're looking at, to be the front, we have to specify them in this order. This one, this one, this one. Or we could start here. We could specify this one, this one, this one. Either way, we have to specify them in this order, in a counterclockwise order. And that, if we kind of specify in a counterclockwise order, remember if we curl our fingers that way, the, our thumb is sticking up, that means that's the front, or that's the top of that, that's where the light's going to hit. If we specify them in this order, all right, think about taking your right hand, you're going to have to kind of turn your right hand funny to curl your fingers that direction, to curl your fingers in a clockwise direction. Where's your, where's your thumb pointing? It's going to be pointing in towards the screen, 
which means away from us. So we're going to be looking at the back of our plane. All right, so hopefully, hopefully that makes a little more sense, kind of being able to see it that way. So now let's specify the, we specify the, the positions. We're going to specify the triangle indices is the, is the, is the property. This is really just saying what order do we want to put these indices, these vertices in, because each one of these makes up a vertice, or vertex point. If we want to specify uh, which of these vertex points comes first, second, and third, all right? So when, which of these vertices comes first, second, and third, which point? That's going to be our triangle indices. All right, that's what this property is. So let's go in and let's say we want to start with the with this one, which is zero. All right. Now we want to go to this one, which is one. And now we want to go to this one, which is three. And those three vertices make a triangle. And if we use those vertices in this order, then we'll get where we want the light to hit, or, or the, the front of that triangle. And that's all we're doing, is we're specifying these. So I'm going to put two spaces in here, just to kind of bring out the point that each one of these, this is one, two, and three vertices for our triangle. And that's the order that we want to specify these particular points when we're talking about our vertices. So now we also have one, two, and three. And then we also have zero, four, and three. And let me go ahead and put a double space in here just to kind of space those out a little bit more. So hopefully that will be a little more clear. And then we also have four, five, and three. So I've specified these triangles in such a way that we're going we're gonna to kind of create a seat. All right, we're going to create two, two square planes that intersect at a right angle. And if, if you take this and, and be able to explore this a little bit more, you'll be able to see that. I think that'll make a little more sense. Hopefully with the description that I've given, it'll make a little bit more sense. So now we actually have our 3D model. We've got our light. We've got our camera. But we still can't see anything. And we can't see anything because it has no idea what type of material this thing is made out of. So let's go into our model. We specified the model geometry. Now let's specify the model material. So we're going to do geometry, geometry model 3D dot material. And then we'll close out our material element. And then we need to give it a material. So we're going to use one of the built-in materials that comes with it. And it's just a diffuse material, which is going to diffuse the light a little bit when the light hits it. Diffuse material. And what brush is it? Let's make it red. Wow. Now that we've applied a material and a brush to our object, we see that now we have two square planes at a right angle to one another here floating in three-dimensional space. And all we did was create a camera so we could see this thing. We could turn it into a two-dimensional area. We created our model, which was made up of uh, some type of a light. And then also this, this mesh, all right, our, our geometry model, which was made up of our, our mesh. And our mesh had a certain number of vertices, a certain number of points. And then we told it what order to use those points to make triangles. And the order that we specified, specified them in a counterclockwise manner so that, so that when we did the counterclockwise, that specified, that showed where the front and the back of our particular triangle was. Then we gave it a material and a brush, and now we can actually realize that in three dimensions. We can actually see that in three dimensions on our screen. 
So let's take a few different perspectives on this. Let's change our camera a little bit. So I'm going to change the position and where it's looking for our camera. Um, let's spin this around a little bit. I'm going to go to uh, maybe negative 10, 45, 15, and then we're going to have it look back to 5, negative 40, negative 10. All right, so now you can see we've just kind of shifted the camera around a little bit to the to the right, and you can see get a different angle, different angle of this. So that that shows how we can shift that camera around a little bit. So hopefully you see now if we continue to shift the camera around a little bit more back over here, and you looked back at this object, you wouldn't see this object; it would disappear. And that's because this is the front, the other side is the back, and there's no light hitting the back. So it would look like it disappeared. It's really still there, but you're not seeing the light reflect off of it. And that's kind of where our perspective camera, why that's so important, because we can specify where the light is actually hitting our object and thus what we see of our object. So hopefully this has given you a little bit clearer view into what all of this, all of this this mumbo jumbo is, if you will, all this complexity is, hopefully we've been able to break that down to something that is a little bit more real and makes a little bit more sense when we talk about working with 3D in WPF.